right, Quilty friends, we are live. It is three o'clock. This is March the 12th. And so we are ready to uh, get started with the Dresden Project. So if you are brand new, my name's Yvonne and this is the Dresden Project. You can see right above my head, there's a little um, URL. It says www.jellyrollclub.com. That is where I post all of the free patterns and all of the patterns that I do in this YouTube channel are free. So if you see um, something that we're making, all of the handouts and all of the goodies are there. All right, I have quite a few people out there already. And I know that with the chime change that some of you guys change your clocks, some people don't change their clocks. It is three o'clock Eastern time. We did roll our clocks forward. So normally this would be two o'clock but we had to move our clocks forward today, so we're ready to get started. So if you're new, please tell us where you're from. If you're not new, then still tell us where you're from anyway. So we've got some newbies and some people that have been with us before, so let's get started. All right, so this is the end of the Jelly Roll series. We actually have two more lessons. We have one in April and one in May, but all of the things that I'm showing you at this point are how to put all of your pieces together. So let's look. If you remember last time we were together before the storms interrupted all of the fun, and so we were without electricity or internet last week, uh, we had to actually leave our home for a few days. This is what I was working on. So let's see who's out there. I see Deneen and Sonia. And who else is out there? I see Les and Christine. I see people from all over the place. All right, everybody. Um, for those of you who have never been here before, we've been working on a table runner of the month. You can see it behind me. Can you guys see that? That was my table runner of the month for March. I did my uh, lady luck block vertically and kind of at an angle. And so that's my table runner back there. If you have not made a table runner, that's a fun one. And you can change the colors and make them into whatever you want. But I chose the colors of the Irish flag, and so I like how she turned out. All right. Let's see. I have friends from San Marcos, Texas, and Ireland, North Carolina, Clarksville, Illinois. So we've got people from all over the place. Maine, Arizona. Welcome, welcome. All right. Dresden Project. This was my plan A because I said I may change my plan, but this is my plan A and I'm still sticking with it. So my plan was to make these giant blocks in a quilt as you go. So the first thing that I started and you and I made a video for this is I was going to make this section. As you can see, I wanted something swirly. I ended up and I'm going to show you what this looks like. I ended up doing a quilt as you go and I actually did clouds. I don't know if you can see those but I'm gonna try to move this out of the way. And, and I attached this sunflower as the sun for my quilts, right? And so what I did is I, um, let me move this way up high so you guys can see it. Um, I did a quilt as you go on the block all the way out to the edges, but I did not quilt about a half inch to the edge and so I left that unquilted. And then what I did is I stitched this giant sun on here but I left these open because what I'm gonna do at the end is I'm gonna come back through and do some decorative um, stitching across my sun. And so I wanted to have that option. But I did stitch all of this down and I did quilt in a grid and you can see on the back there's a grid right there. Can you guys see that? So that's what I did with my son, right? That's on this, this plan. So this is my top corner. I have my little son there. The next thing that I did is I quilted the other panels, but I did some clouds. So I just took some gray and I kind of hand drew some clouds and I just did some free motion. And I'm gonna come back here and make some of these a little bit thicker, but I wasn't too fussy about how I did that. And so I quilted the next two pieces, which were these right here, right? And if you notice, there's a big seam here of where I wanted to put those together. So I'm gonna show you this seam that's back here on the back side because that was one of the questions, right? And so today I'm gonna, I'm answering this question that I got online is, how did you join these segments? And then we're gonna move on to the section where I'm gonna show you how to make the stems and 
the um, leaves for this project. Okay, so let me just flip it to the back so you can see. When I joined my seams together, right, this is a quilt as you go, um, what I did is I trimmed, I left that edge unquilted, and then I trimmed, pull all these pins so you can see. I trimmed that batting so that these were kind of joined together. I rolled one of my uh, backing pieces flat and then I laid the next backing piece over that edge. And then I simply press it with an iron, just give it a really good hard press. And you can join any quilt that you can make in like sections. So I kind of push this one over with my iron like this. And then I make sure that I can roll this one flat. And I try to get it as flat as I can. You could press it by hand, you can press it with an iron. And I just try to get that as flat as I can. And then I pin all of this together like this through all of those layers. And then I just simply whip stitch this close. So there were several people that said, well, how do you, how do you close this? And so if you've ever done a quilt as you go, what you do with this is you simply take, and I just take um, some thread you can use single thread, double thread. I do a little quilter's knot in there. And then I start with that quilter's knot inside like this so that you can't see it. And then I simply go down this seam using an invisible stitch or a ladder stitch and a ladder stitch is simply stitched on both sides. So I take a little bite on the left like this. Can you guys see my hands? I take a little bite. Like this and I pull it shut. And then I come in on the opposite side along that edge and I take a little you see what edge I'm talking about? This edge right here. I'm gonna simply take a little nibble right inside that seam. Let me put my glasses on so that I can see what I'm doing. And I simply take a, a stitch inside the, right where that fabric folds. And I'm using a color that matches. And then I'm coming in and then when I pull those, those together, it creates a little invisible stitch and then you don't see that on the back. And I'm gonna go all the way down my seam, pulling those together and doing an invisible ladder stitch until I get to the bottom of this. And this is how you close any time you have a quilt as you go. I also have the option of coming back here and simply putting a little bit of glue along that edge like a washable Elmer's glue like this like a glue stick and simply quilting over this entire seam quilting it closed and then adding additional quilting lines and so if I want to I can simply come in here add a little bit of washable Elmer's glue make sure that that is nice and closed and I can come back through here and extend these quilting lines all the way over and maybe quilt another design so that this is completely closed and if I see any areas I don't like I can always just kind of close them by hand or close them by machine so you can do it any way you want but the main thing is is that you're just kind of going to close it you can also whip stitch it closed but I prefer a ladder stitch so you can also do it like this I just kind of like this little ladder stitch because it makes it invisible and it's very very secure and as you can see you don't see that once it's sewn together and so like I said, ladder stitches are my favorite. I just go opposite sides. I go one side. I flip it to the other side. I go right along that seam. And I just keep sewing down. It's one of the easiest stitches you're ever going to do. It's great for um, fixing, uh, repairing clothes. So if you ever have like a jacket that you have to sew on the outside of a seam because you can't get to the inside where there's a lining, 
A ladder stitch is one of the best ways to do that. I've sewn an entire jacket. My students at school all the time bring me things to repair. They're like, can you miss B? Can you fix this? And so I always use a ladder stitch and you can just whip it together and you just kind of pull it with your finger gently and it makes a nice, flat, invisible outer stitch. Does anybody have any questions on how I'm closing my, my pieces for this particular quilt? And like I said, I'm doing it quilt as you go because it was easier to work with this in sections than to try to work with this as a gigantic quilt. And so quilt as you go is very good when you're doing something that requires managing pieces, but you don't want to manage an entire humongous quilt. It's great for beginners, and it's also great for people who have a domestic machine and you don't have a fancy long arm. You can do an entire humongous quilt using the quilt as you go method. I'm just gonna clip that for now, and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna sew it. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it shut like this, and that is ready to go. Does anybody have any questions about how I'm joining these pieces? You guys are okay with that, right? And like I said, I can just take these now and roll them up. And that one's already been joined on that side. But I'm just rolling up my sections. So my sections are now 20 inches wide. And I'm gonna set it over here to the side. And so now this one is ready for me to work on later. Okay. Now the bottom part of my quilt is gonna have all of the stems to my flowers. So if you look at my, my plan, this bottom section, the majority of it is stems. And so at first I thought I was gonna join it like this and like this, like four big pieces, but I changed my mind and I went ahead and joined these six blocks together. And then I quilted vertical lines all the way up in a, a bright green to stabilize these pieces because I'm now gonna join those pieces to this section that's up here at the top, okay? So let me show you what I've done. So as you can see, this is the bottom and it has these little wavy lines and I did a green thread and then I just literally did just vertical lines all the way across about three inches apart all the way across my panel and so now I have a giant panel and let me show you what that looks like. Let me switch cameras. So as you can see, I have one piece to work with. It's not that big. Um, and I have the edges are left unquilted like this so that I can come back and join my pieces later on. So now I'm ready to start working on my leaves and my stems now that I have all of my pieces quilted. All right. So these are my pieces and I'm setting them aside. And these are big enough. So if you wanted to do a large bed quilt, you could actually do a quilt in sec sections that were like 40 inches. So if you wanted to do a queen size quilt or a full size quilt, you could do a, the, a, the center panel like this 40 inches and then put 20 inches on either side. And you could actually quilt an entire queen size quilt on your domestic sewing machine without too much problems. All right, so that was the backing. And uh, so I needed to get that out of the way. So these are the things that, that were asked on the channel and so that's why I'm answering. Oh, the paisley blue. Yeah, I, I love the, the blue paisley for the backing. That, that just looks really nice. All right, so let's look at what we have. So I have explained how I'm doing this section. So now I'm gonna talk to you about these giant stems because my, some of my flowers are huge like this one, like this is the biggest flower. And by the way, I took my California poppy and if you wanna know how I'm putting it together, what I did is I used interfacing, right? And I literally stitched interfacing to interfacing and then made these holes in the middle, flipped it around and pressed it. That's how I got these smooth edges. And I took my other one and I joined it with my California poppy. So now I have like a composite flower and I like how that turned out. So if I, I wasn't a fan of the center part of my California poppy, but I do like the way this one turned out. 
So this is my biggest flower. So this lady is going to need a pretty substantial stem and some flowers. So for her, I have a variety of leaf sizes. So if you notice, these leaves are pretty big, right? I put this in the handout. It says leaves in three sizes. This is the largest leaf that I'm gonna use. And I also have some free motion quilting motifs, which I will use at the very end. So once the entire project is done, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do some additional free motion around my finished flowers, just to kind of give it some additional depth. So I'm gonna be working with these flowers here, these leaves, but you can also work with the leaves that came with, for example, uh, the sunflower, that's a pretty decent sized leaf. So if you like this leaf shape instead, you could do that one. But I'm gonna work with this shape because it's a little bit more simple. And so these are the handouts. If you notice, I have more than one because I print multiple sometimes. And I'm gonna lay these aside and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. All right, to make my leaves, I'm gonna use parchment paper. I'm also gonna use interfacing. This interfacing does not have any glue at all. It's a thin interfacing, and let me see the number, I keep my invoices. This one is a Pellon P45J. So it's a Pellon P45, so it's a non-fusible, non-woven interfacing, and it's, um, lightweight so as you can see this is thin people use that to stabilize collars and other stuff when they're sewing you can also use this to stabilize embroidery but it's not very thick and so i'm going to use some of this i'm going to just cut a chunk maybe about a half a yard 18 inches or so and i usually buy three yards at a time I like to use this on um, any time that I'm doing embroidery and I want to leave this, the stabilizer in there, the interfacing, this is what I use. So I'm going to take a little bit of that and I'm going to take my parchment paper and I'm going to lay it on top. because I'm gonna draw my leaf on here that I'm gonna stitch onto some fabric. So first I'm just going to draw, and the reason I have the parchment paper is because I use a Sharpie, and I don't want the Sharpie to bleed all over my image, because I wanna reuse that several times. So I'm gonna take just a, a skinny Sharpie and I'm just gonna carefully trace like this. Doesn't even have to be perfect. And you're just gonna trace right on the interfacing and this line that I drew on there is my stitching line. If You can see that. So you can draw a couple of these and you're gonna wanna leave about a half an inch extra on the outside edges of that so that you have some room to cut your fabric. If you notice this has a stem, I'm gonna come back and do that stem later. And so when I cut these, I'm gonna cut them to there. All right, so I've got a couple of these drawn so you can see what they look like. Let me move this out of the way. And now I'm gonna decide what fabric I wanna use. And you can use just about anything. But some of my favorite fabric for this are probably batiks. This is a great place to use your scraps. So you can use um, a dark green like this one. That would make good leaves. Maybe you have a batik that has these little dragonflies and you can put the dragonflies on the leaves directly. Maybe you have a quilting cotton that has these little chevrons on it. Any of these things would work for the leaves of this project. Maybe you have a batik that has a paisley like this one 
and maybe you want to center this design here on some of the leaves just to give it a little bit of interest but you decide what you're going to do one of the things that i like to do is i like to trim that out so i'm going to leave some border around that just kind of leave a border all the way around I'm going to trim the next one like I said I'm going to leave a border and this is not super thick and this is a great weight so if you love to do um, applique um, using like the Lori Holt method where she uses interfacing. This is some of my favorite interfacing to use for like um, faux uh, needle turned applique. So you could do the fusible method or the interfacing method like this. And those are both great ways. All right, so I can use these pieces now. If you have jelly roll strips, just like we did in the March, for those of you who did watch the March table runner, you could actually put multiple pieces together so you could uh, piece different pieces of fabric together. So let's say I wanted to do this green and maybe another green and have my leaf be two colors. I could do it that way. I could do two different greens like this. I could give my leaf texture. So if I wanted to do that, I would just stitch these together and then I would lay this on top. So let me show you what that would look like if I'm going to piece my leaves. And this is a great place. So if you have a stack of green scraps like I do, just pull your greens and decide, ooh, what would be a really fun green for this? Because I have all kinds of greens. So I'm going to sew a couple of these greens and let me show you over here on the machine. And I'm going to put them together to make one of the leaves. All right, so I'm gonna take and I'm just gonna lay that there. It doesn't matter which side I use because there's no glue on this, so it doesn't matter. And I'm just gonna sew two scraps from my scrap pile. together and a quarter inch seam is uh, not urgent here because I'm just going to open it and I'm going to freeform cut that leaf so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch it together like this make sure your stitch length is nice and tight I have my uh, seam guide right there to just help me keep my long pieces straight just makes for easy sewing of stuff out of your way and these leaves you can use the different leaf sizes depending on your flower so some of my flowers are large like this one it's a big fat giant one some of my leaves are smaller so I would want to use the medium size one and then some are itty bitty so I would use a tiny leaf there we go. And this is just a piece of scrap with one of my jelly roll strips together. And I just want that to be nice and flat. I'm gonna let that sit there for a second. And like I said, this doesn't matter because there's no glue on this at all. And then I'm going to lay that on there and I'm going to kind of center it. See where this is centered? So I'm going to center it down here and center it right here. 
And if I had just a, a regular jelly roll strip on this side, it would um, fit right on there. So that's not a problem. You don't feel like trimming that whole thing. I'm going to leave, so I have my little ruler here, and I'm gonna leave about a fourth of an inch on the outside of that. Just kind of leave a border. Some people cut afterwards. I just kind of find all this extra bulk gets in my way, so I just give it a little trim. And so you're just going to want to make sure that you have at least a fourth of an inch of fabric away from that drawn line. And now I'm going to go sew this on my sewing machine. So I've got interfacing and I have my two pieces of fabric. So now I'm ready to stitch. And I'm going to leave this, this bottom piece kind of open because this is where I'm going to cover it with a stem. But I'm going to come in here about a half inch. I'm gonna sew all the way around and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna leave about a half inch because this is where I'm gonna turn this piece. So if you wanted to, you could sew it closed, trim the interfacing and open it. That's another option. So there's always more than one way to skin a cat. So depending on how you want that, I'm gonna leave it open because it's gonna be hidden by the stem so it doesn't matter, okay? So let me show you what that looks like. I'm just gonna to go to my machine. And I'm using a really tight stitch length for this. So I'm using a 1.9 stitch length on my machine. So there I have it, and I'm just gonna come in here now and I'm gonna trim it. Now you can trim it with all kinds of scissors. Some people like to trim these with um, pinking shears, but you don't have to. I'm gonna come in about an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna come into that tip and I'm gonna blunt it across there. And I'm going to leave it all the way around like this. And I'm going to leave that tail there and then I'm going to flip this around. You can flip this around with just about any tool you want. One of my favorite tools is a chopstick. You can use a pencil. I use a bodkin. Anything that you have laying around. I have my little turning chopstick. It doesn't really matter. You can turn it with whatever tool you have handy. Just gonna push that in like this. Like I said, I could trim that interfacing if I wanted to, but I wanna leave that interfacing behind the entire piece, so I'm gonna leave it this way. So I'm gonna carefully push, not too hard. Let's just hold it with my thumbs. I'm gonna grab it. I'm going to pull it out through the hole. Kind of stick it in my finger like that, and there I have it. Hi, everybody. Let's see. We've got a lot of new people that just joined us. We have Christina. Hi, Christina. She's coming from Italy. Welcome. We have Marianne. Hi, Marianne. And so I'm just going to push that in there, and I'm going to use my chopstick all the way around kind of get that leaf exactly the way that I want. 
I'm going to use that to kind of shove the interfacing into the tip. And I like how this leaf is shaped. I like it a lot. And this section that's unsewn is going to get covered up. If you notice, I can join it like this, so I can have this leaf pointing up or I can have this leaf pointing down. I like the leaf with the two pieces of fabric instead of just one color. I think it looks better. So then I'm just going to take my leaf. This is also why I have parchment paper. I find that if I lay parchment paper on my wool mat that I don't get as much yucky ducky stuff on there. So if you're using uh, the interfacing that has fusible, you definitely don't want to be ironing on your wool mat. Ask me how I know that. Oh my goodness. So B says that there's a blizzard in North Dakota. We had terrible straight line winds around here. Um, about 10 days ago and we were uh, without power and electricity and we had like limited sewage. So there was no Dresden, there was no sewing, there was no anything at my house for five or six days. There we go. So this is how I'm gonna make the leaves. Why am I leaving the end open instead of sewing all the way around? Because this makes it really flat so if you notice, when you turn it, it leaves a little bunch of fabric right there. You see that? And that gives the end some dimension. But down here at the bottom, it makes it very, very flat. And this is the end that I'm going to put under the stem. So I don't want any bulk down there on the stem. And that's why I'm making this side flat and not closed. Am I making sense, Marge? So this is one of my leaves, right? And so I'm going to be joining this to a stem. And so let's say that I want this as my stem. So I'm going to use jelly roll strips for my stems because most of my stems are going to be nice and straight. And jelly roll strips tend to be nice and long, so they're 40 inches. And so I'm just going to use jelly roll strips, and this is how I'm going to prepare mine, right? So if your strips are going to be straight, you're simply going to take your jelly roll strips and you're going to fold them in. So for my large flower, I'm going to fold it in like this on both sides and they're going to meet in the middle, right? And so my jelly roll strips are going to end up like this. And so I'm just going to take an iron. It doesn't have to be fancy. And I'm going to come to the center. You can use one of those um, bias makers if you want, but it's not necessary to have all those extra tools laying around in your sewing room getting lost. And then you only use them for one project and then they sit around. You can actually just fold them with your fingers like this. And you're folding them so that you're making a single fold stem like this because when I sew it down, I'm gonna sew it down on both sides. Just like that. So how much uh, snow are you guys getting up north? I see Marge talking about a blizzard on its way. I hope and pray that you guys don't lose electricity up there. All right, friends. And so I'm gonna take all of my stems and I'm simply gonna press them like this and I'm gonna pin them to my backing just like that. And I'm gonna tuck my leaves underneath here and then I'm gonna stitch them down on both sides with my sewing machine. So this is how I'm gonna make my stems and on the end of each of these stems is going to be my giant flower just like that and so my leaves are going to be loose and then my leaves can either go on top of a flower or beside my flower 
I'm also going to make ladybugs to travel along some of these. And so when you have the, the next live stream, I'm going to show you all my little bugs I'm going to add on here. But by the time you guys come back and see me again for the next one of these episodes, I'm going to have a bunch of little bugs and I'm going to make some bug templates. So I'm going to have to draw those for you and I'm going to put them on the website. So I could put this leaf this way. And, and like Marge said, why did I not close it? Because I want this side to be super flat. And I can either put it this way and my leaf can go down or I can put it this way and my leaf can go up. But either way, my leaf is going to get secured. I'm going to stitch it down by hand or I can stitch it down by machine. And then you can secure it with a little bit of washable school glue. If you don't have the sticks, you can also use a little bit of diluted 50-50. So just where it says washable, that means that when you wash this, it'll come out. That works good. So either the glue sticks or this will work for those. And so this is how I'm going to make all of my leaves. Does anybody have any questions on how I'm going to do my leaves? And this is how I'm going to do them. They're just jelly roll strips. And so this is the leaf that's going to go with this one. And I can do a different color on the other side. So I did little swirls and I want to do big swirls on this other leaf. And so this is how I'm going to put all of my leaves together. And I'm going to make a total of 15 leaves of different sizes to go with all of my stems before I anchor them to the backing. All right, everybody, it is 3.36. If you guys don't have any other questions, I'm going to get busy making more of my leaves and more of my big stems. Um, and then I'm going to start attaching them to my backing. Does anybody have any questions about what you do next for this project? So you're just going to make all of your stems and all of your leaves. And then I will post an update video like I did before showing you how I'm attaching these to the background, okay? And so this is how I'm going to do these ginormous, let's see, you can see, this ginormous flower is gonna have a leaf attached and it's gonna be just like this and it's gonna be attached to that big leaf. All right, friends, so this is what I'm working on. I hope uh, that I hope that you're going to join me and, and share your pictures of what you're working on. Like I said, I've got about 15 more leaves to work on, and then I will put all of this together. This, the, this power outage and severe weather kind of threw me off schedule, but I'm going to get caught up. I'm also going to be putting the um, pattern for the April butterfly. For those of you who don't know, I decided to jump into paper piecing. So for the April table runner of the month, we're going to have butterflies and you're going to really love those. So join me next Sunday at two o'clock Eastern time. So we don't have a time shift next week. So two o'clock Eastern time. And I will show you how to paper piece your butterflies and make a beautiful um, spring inspired table runner. And you'll also get a sneak peek at this guy because I'm going to be working on the Dresden project all week and you'll get to see both of them. So next Sunday is the table runner of the month for April. So I hope you have a lot of fun playing with your jelly roll scraps. Use up all the scraps, people. Don't leave them in the scrap bin. Make yourself a bunch of beautiful leaves and then you're going to be ready to go. Remember, non-fusible, lightweight interfacing is your friend for all of these projects. All right, friends, you guys have a wonderful Sunday. I will be in the uh, meeting room, so I'm going to go into the, the there's a, a Facebook group that says the Jelly Roll Club meeting room. I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to open the, um, the virtual chat room, so if you want to jump in there and ask me any additional questions, you can do that. But you guys have a wonderful Sunday, and I will see you next week to work on our April table runner, and so you guys can get a peek at my progress on this one. All right, everybody, you guys have a wonderful Sunday, and I will see you guys later. Bye, everybody.